everybody. I'm Russell Leidick. I figured after almost six years since Jungle Bubble has been released, uh, it's high time for an introduction. So um, I just wanted to say hello to all of you. And more importantly, just thank you for almost six great years of really interesting interactions around fishbowls and aquariums and environmentalism and animal ethics and so forth. Um, I think it's, it's certainly stimulated a lot of creative thinking. And, and, and ultimately, you know, despite the disputes one way or the other, I, I think the the emergence from all of this will be a better understanding of the natural world uh, on, on the one hand, but also what it takes to actually mimic the natural world in our homes. And, you know, I would, I would actually argue uh, in a very technologically uh, savvy time for humanity, it's actually more important now to make sure that we put forth some effort uh, to keep a, a little space of nature in our homes because you know, day by day, it's being destroyed out there, and uh, there will be species that are uh, rendered extinct by human actions uh, about which we will never know because they will not have been discovered before they were destroyed. Now, I'm the first person to advocate uh, the technological ascendancy of civilization. I mean, I, I think we need to build tall buildings and amazing underground, you know, shopping complexes and railways and all this cool stuff and electric cars. But I think if we just plow over the planet and turn it into a parking lot, uh, we're going to pay a price uh, for which there is no redemption. You can't get that stuff back once it's destroyed. It's very, it's very difficult just to reforest an acre of land, let alone to undo all the pollution that we've made in the world. You know, it's probably thermodynamically uh, just about impossible. Um, so the upshot of all this is that we have to prepare for a future in which nature... Uh, become sort of a euphemism for something we keep in, in a little container in our homes. Uh, but if that's the best we can do, then we'd better learn how to do it well. I mean, here I have Ember Tupoy over on my right. and my left, I have She Hidden His Rainbow. The uh, Colombian Tetras have taken over completely, but that's another story. Um, and by the way, there's, there's a lot more tanks I have to show you. I just haven't had time. But the bottom line is, I think there's a really important discussion that we're having, and I think uh, it should continue. And it doesn't even have to, you know, involve me. It doesn't have to involve this channel. I'm not that egoistic. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that with you, that we've been a, a small part of this. And I think we're kicking off some cognitive processes in a lot of people that ultimately will lead to a better world in some small way. You know, even if all you can afford to do is keep, you know, something like Ember Tupoy, like, say, a three-gallon bowl with a, a few small fish in it, if you can learn to achieve a natural balance in that kind of environment, you'll have taught yourself more than all the volumes of ecology could possibly teach you about how nature actually works in the real world. It, it really is beyond parallel as, a, as an environmental education tool. And that applies also to everybody who sees it. I mean, you, you may never know how you affect people uh, you know, who, who see your little aquarium or something. They might ask you a few questions and then, and then they seem to lose interest, but it, it churns in the back of their minds and they may talk to other people. I mean, it's kind of infectious. Um, and I think that's a healthy thing for an increasingly technological planet such as ours. Uh, but the bottom line is, um, I really hope you enjoy the channel. Um, definitely don't be afraid to speak up, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, just keep it relevant, and I think we'll all have a great time. I'm happy to meet you all. There's a lot more to come. Take care.